I'm going to show you how to make a cute little rotating head. Simple project that just takes a few minutes. To get started, you're going to need some kind of a box, and I love using these Kleenex boxes. They're just tremendous because they're just about the right size, and they're so easy to work with. It's easy to cut them up, drill holes, punch holes, cut windows in, modify, whatever. It's so much easier to work with cardboard than it is with wood or metal. So these are just perfect. I go through a lot of these. So get yourself some Kleenex boxes or other boxes or just make your own out of stiff cardboard. Let's make a little spinning head out of this. What do you say? So I already have, I took a ping pong ball and I glued some little eyeballs on it and I glued a piece of straw. Here are, here's what the eyeballs look like. I got a little pack, they call them wiggly eyes. And you get, I got a variety of sizes. You know, I don't know, a couple of dollars or something for all these. And so I just hot glued a couple of eyeballs on this ping pong ball. I bought a pack of six ping pong balls, I think. And I hot glued a piece of straw, a, a straw like this around, and I just cut off a piece and glued it on so that it will fit the shaft of a motor that I'm going to use. And I will put a link to these some of these parts in the comments section. But here, this is a uh, six, let's see, I think it's a six to 12 volt motor. Yeah, oh, three to six volts. And I run that off a little, I, I run it off a variety of power supplies, but I've got this little two AA battery holder. It's really convenient if you get one that's got an on off switch. And I just soldered some alligator clips onto it. So there's my three volt source for this three to six volt motor. This is actually a little robot motor. I don't know if you can get them without the wheels or not, but this one came with some big robot driving wheels that go on these two shafts. So any any motor you could find that will work is, you know, is fine. The way that I do this then is just for this little mock-up, is I just take my little Kleenex box, and you can paint it first if you want to, or I have some construction paper that you could use to, we're going to put some screws in here probably. If you want, if you just use paint, your screws will show, but you could cover it with some construction paper. I just cut an appropriate size piece of construction paper here, or you could make it a little bit longer and you can fold it over, you know, make your project a little bit more like that. Whatever you want to do, you can do, but I'm just going to use the bare Kleenex box for now. What I'm going to do then is just use a ruler to mark the center of this box. You could just eyeball it going to be that big of a deal but it's six inches across so I'm just going to draw a little line there and do the same thing here and hope that that ink showed up it didn't try one more time so I've got a little x right there supposedly in the center of the box and I use I've got this great little tool that I use start holes in cardboard again you know if you're using wood or something you would have to drill with the cardboard you can just punch holes with a nail or whatever you've got so i just use this little tool right here it just i just punch a little starter <laughs> hole in there with that and and one another thing that's so nice about the box is that it's got an exit point for wires and stuff you could even do it from this direction you could mount your hole here and then it'd be easier to escape your wires out the back side but seeing as I've already started at the top, let's keep going with that. And then we just need a hole big enough for this shaft to fit through from the underside. And the way that I do that is I find a drill that's the appropriate size. And I just compare, I compare drills to the shaft and I just look, I just look for the diameter. And if the diameter is a little bit bigger than the motor shaft, then I figure I'm doing pretty good. So then I just use that. I just go by hand and I twist that. And that's why they're called twist drills. <laughs> I just twist a little hole right there. 
And bingo, I've got a place for that shaft to exit. So if I just test that, if I just stick my hand in here, I will just test that. See if my shaft comes through and look at that. That's all I need to mount my little head. And that's how it's going to look when we get finished. Now, what I would do if I wanted to make this somewhat permanent, what I would do is I would drop it in here and it's got a couple of mounting holes here. I would mark those holes. So I'll take my little punch tool again. And I'm doing it at an angle because I know there's not very much room this way. So I'm putting him in at an angle so that we got a little bit more room for the motor. And now I've got two mounting holes for the screws. I'll give them just a little bit more diameter here. I love this tool. I got a bunch of them. I got a pack of tools that are just great picks and pointers and stuff for about four or five dollars, I think. They're great tools to have around. Okay, so we've got mounting holes and we've got a hole for the shaft. Now, I was having a little trouble getting my hand in there, so what I would do is probably make that, in fact, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. That's a short, short little prospect here, short little project. Again, imagine trying to do this with wood. Look at how much easier this is. I love working with cardboard for my little mock-ups. And then, you know, once you get your mock-up working, and if you know it's what you want, then you can switch to wood for a more permanent project if you need to. Or if it's going to be someplace where people aren't going to mess with it, you could stay with cardboard. Okay, now I can get my hand in there. So now what I'm going to do is put that motor in and find the hole for the shaft. And I can mount that, if you wanted to, you could put your screws in, like I said before. But if you wanted to even be quicker with this, masking tape is a wonderful thing. If I can find the right hole to put this baby in. There, so now I just push that motor in there. And, you know, just to get going, I'm going to you know, another one of my little secrets here. A little masking tape. Who needs screws when you've got masking tape? So there I've just taped it in, that's all it took. And I hopefully have got the shaft coming out. Yep, there's the shaft. I can put my little, now it's not, you can see it's not, it's not vertical there. So that's an issue. So you're gonna have to adjust. You're gonna have to make some kind of adjustment to get that vertical. Let me try one more piece of masking tape. and see if that will do it. Otherwise, we'll have to take the time to put the screws in. Well, it's better. It's not perfect, but it's close enough for my little demonstration here. All I have to do then is put the little cute little head on there and hook up the wires. So let me get my little power supply out here and use my little alligator clips to hook on. Okay, we'll kind of hide our leads behind the box. Set up, clean up our workbench here a little bit. And turn this this way so you can enjoy the wonderment of it all. And there we go. It's actually a little faster than I would want it, so I'd change it maybe to one volt instead of three. Although it's a three volt motor, you can still run it at a much lower voltage. And so I would just have this set up someplace and I would just have it going. And like I said, you can cover it. You can put some of your, some of your black construction paper down underneath it, or you can paint it black or whatever you want to do. And then you can put screws in there too to make it a more permanent fixture and hide your leads around back. And there's a fun little rotating head.
very easy to do. Fun little project.